Hey guys, welcome back to Jacket Educational Channel. So this is the part 42 of the unit wise expected questions for the UGC Net Environmental Science syllabus. And today we are going to start the new unit that is statistics for the Net Environmental Science syllabus. So those who haven't checked the previous 41 part, you can check the link given in the description. And before starting this video, I would like to say already there are two important videos made on the concept and basics of statistics according to the net or any entrance examination related to environmental science basic statistics has been explained and the questions are discussed in these two parts so these two parts are also very important you can check their link also in the description so let's start today's first question and these questions will be very easy and these are actually they will be solved within seconds that's why i'm telling these are chocolate questions so let us read the questions first the first question is the mean of the given data a a a a will be what so the data is actually given here that is a a a a all these are four data and you have to think within seconds that what will be the correct answer that is the mean of this data so i'll wait for a certain second then i'll reveal the answer and here the correct option will be option number c the mean will be a how because to find the mean the formula is sum of all the observation that means we have to take summation of x that is the observation of all summation divided by number of observations so here sum of observations will be how much that will be a plus a plus a and plus a so total 4a we will add that is summation of all the values in the data that is equal to 4a divided by number of observations so observations are four observations so 4a by 4 4 4 will be cancelled and the mean will be a which will be the option number a will be the correct option let's move to the second question second chocolate question it will be also solved within seconds let's read the question first the question is is sum of 20 values 300 so there are 20 values in a data and the sum is 300 then we have to find the mean of the data and the options are 15, 30, 20 or 300. And here the correct option will be option number A, 15 will be the mean of the data. How? It will be also applicable for the same formula which we used in the previous question. That is summation of all the observations, that is summation of x divided by number of observations is equal to the mean. That is we have to denote it as x bar that is the mean. So here summation of 20 values. So here what it is given? Here n is given that is 20 number of values. So we will write in place of n is equal to 20 and summation is given as 300. So summation of x is given as 300. So what we have to find? We have to find the x mean. So simply divide 300 by 20 that will be giving the answer as 15. That's why option number a will be the correct answer that is 300 divided by 20 is 15. Let's move to the next question. So it will be interesting question now this is the conceptual question so this is also very easy let's read the question first the question is if you add or subtract a particular value in every data so mark here it is written every data in the original data set then this process is known as what and here the process which will be called in this situation will be option number b this is called as change of origin so we should know what is this difference between change of scale and change of origin because it is a conceptual question. Let's move to the next slide to clear our concept. So the concept is when we will say that there is a change of origin. Yes, change of origin we will say when there is a number say that is m. So when it is subtracted or added. So it is missing here when it is subtracted or added from each observation then it shifts the origin from 0 to the point m that is the number which is added. So it is telling that if there is a set of observations and if a number is added or subtracted to each observation then the new observations mean will be the mean of the original data that is the previous data plus or minus the number which is added or subtracted. So if it is added it will be added if it is subtracted then it will be subtracted. So to clear this thing we will look into the example. So let us take the example to know what is this change of origin. So let us take an example that there is a data set and the data are 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So let us first find the mean of this data set. So what will be the mean? Sum of all the values that is 1, 
plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 that will be how much that will be 5 plus 4 9 12 14 and 15 so total sum of all the observations will be 15 divided by number of observations so that is the basic concept so number of observations are 5 so we will divide it and the mean will be how much it will be 3 so this is the original data so as per this concept there is the change of origin if we add or subtract any value so let us take an example that we are adding 1 that is number 1 is added to each of the data then what will be the change in the mean so you should remember when it is not changed the mean is 3 so we will write down when it is not changed the mean is 3 so he will write it here so for the reference then we will add 1 to each of these values so then the data set will become 2 3 4 5 and 6 how because adding 1 to each of this data then what we will take we will take the mean so what will be the mean similar process we will follow 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 that will be how much that will be 20 number of observations will be 5 so here 20 divided by 5 will be 4 so previously the mean was 3 but when 1 is added to each of this data the mean become 4 so how what is the difference the difference is 3 plus 1 the is the 4 that is the new mean so that's the concept which is telling in this change of origin so if any value is added or subtracted to each observation then we have to simply add or subtract based on the condition to that original data mean then we will get the mean which is the mean of the new observations i hope you are clear with this let's move to the next concept so the next concept is change of scale so what is this change of scale when the original observations are scaled or divided by a number then this is known as change of scale so for that the mean of original data is equal to mean of new observations into the factor or the number by which the observations are divided so to know this thing what this concept is telling again let us take the same example for change of scale so what is this change of scale same given data we have taken and already we have found the mean of this data set which is how much that is 3 so we already calculated no need to find now we have to act according to the situation that is let us divide 2 in each case so we will divide the number 2 in each case after dividing the new data set will be 1 by 2 that is 0 0.5 next will be 1 that is 2 divided by 2 will be 1 then will be 3 divided by 2 that is will be 3 by 2 then it will come 4 by 2 that is 2 then 5 by 2 that is 2.5 so to find the mean of these values that is 1 by 2 plus 1 plus 3 by 2 plus 2 plus 5 by 2 all this sum together we will get the value as 7.5 so after dividing all this thing with 2 and adding all them all of them we will get the value as 7.5 that is the summation of the new data set so i have not written here but you should recall then divided by the number of observation that is 5 so if you divide this the value will be 1.5 and we know the previous mean that is the mean of this data set the previous one was 3 so how we got this is by dividing the previous mean by the number in which we are divided this number we got this value that is 1.5 so no need to go all for subtracting all this or adding all this simply we have to divide the previous means that is the, you should assume previous means divided by the number the number which is divided then we will get the new mean of the data set so that is the change of scale so i hope you have understood this one let's move to the next question so this question is coming from the probability section and this question is very easy as usual the question is when two dice and a single coin are tossed together then total sample space will be how much so here we can see this is the coin and this is the example of the dice so here we have to find the total sample space and here the correct option will be option number d 72 is the total sample space that means how to find the total sample space for example for in case of coin there are two probability that is it can be either head or it can be tail so there are two probabilities two chances one single coin two chances so we will write it here then what happened is here written two dice so in one dice what are the sample space sample space means what can be the outcome it can be one two three four five or six so there are total six sample space for one dice so that means it is two multiplied by six but here as it is given two dice then the sample space will be multiplied with the sample space of another dice so it will be two into six into six 
that is equal to 72. So to calculate the sample space, we have to find what is the sample space for the coin as well as the dice and if it is 2 dice, 3 dice, 4 dice, accordingly we will multiply with the 6. So this is the way to find the total sample space of any sample given. So let's move to the next question. So again a question is coming from the probability section but here only the coin is given. Yes, the question is when two coins are tossed together then probability of getting no tail is how much. So you have to analyze them and after some time I will reveal the answer. So here the correct option will be option number B 0 0.25. So how we got I will tell you. For example, we will write what are the sample space. So what are the possibility of coming when two coins are tossed. So one can be head, the other can be tail. The one can be tail, the other can be head. Both can be head or both can be tail. So we have written all the sample space for tossing two coins. But here it is asking probability of not getting a tail. So here we got tail, here we are getting tail, here we are getting tail. But in this situation we are not getting any tail. So this is how much? So this is 1 out of the 4 chances or 4 sample space, 4 probability of tossing 2 coins. That means 1 divided by 4 is equal to 0 0.25. So that is the answer that when 2 coins are tossed together, then probability of getting no tail is 0 0.25. So I hope you are clear. So total chances are 4 and in this case only the tail is not there, not at all, no tail. That's why 1 by 4 would be 0 0.25. Let's move to the next question. The next question is given and the question is actually incomplete. Let me tell you this question is from the chi-square test. So here this is asking that the degree of freedom as per the given data table according to the chi-square test will be how much. So you have to analyze this table and the answer will be within seconds. So here the correct answer will be option number B3 will be the degree of freedom. So how we got? Let us read this question is 100 people were interviewed outside a chocolate shop to find out which flavor of chocolate cream they prefer. So the things are there are kinds of people male and female and the chocolate flavors are strawberry, coffee, orange and vanilla. So to find the degree of freedom for the chi-square test the formula is rho minus 1 multiplied by column minus 1. So this is the formula and you should know here that here actually how many rows are there and how many columns are there. So let me write the formula once again rho minus 1 multiplied by column minus 1 is the degree of freedom that is denoted as DOF for the chi-square test and here there are two rows that is male and female so we'll write 2 minus 1 multiplied by how many columns are there there are four columns strawberry coffee orange and vanilla so 4 minus 1 so here if we solve them it will be 1 multiplied by 3 so the answer will be 3 the degree of freedom will be 3. So in this way you can solve very easy questions which are the basics for the statistics. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe the channel to get further updates. See you guys in our next video.